What's up, everybody, and welcome to this episode of our athlete interview series presented by USANA. I'm your host, Jason Nacy, and today we're chatting with Ashley Caldwell, a three time Olympian and 2017 world champion. Ashley holds a world record for the hardest acrobatic trick ever landed by a female. Welcome, and thanks for, thanks for taking out the time today, Ashley. Yeah, of course. So how'd your competition go this weekend? I'm, I'm sorry I wasn't able to make it up there on Saturday, but uh, looks like things went well. Yeah, things went really well. So this was actually a comp simulation. So we don't have yeah. a lot of comps in the summertime when we're training. And so um, we like to bring in some judges and make it feel like a real event um, up at the Utah Olympic Park. I won the individual day, um, which was really exciting, alongside my teammate and boyfriend, Justin, which is always really cool. Um, and yeah, I had a really great event. I threw down, you know, my biggest tricks and, and worked out really well for me. So what's your, what's your biggest trick right now? Cause I know at, at one point they, uh, you, you, didn't you have the world record for pulling the hardest acrobatic tr- trick ever by a female and it was called the daddy. <laughs> yeah, funny and ironic, the name, the daddy. Um, but yeah, so it's a quadruple twisting, triple backflip. And I successfully competed it at world championships, which gave me the world record. And um, as far as I know, it has not been successfully competed in international competition since then um, by any acrobatic discipline, not just uh, freestyle skiing, but uh, I, I'm pretty sure across the board. And I'm hoping that I say this enough so that if it's untrue, that somebody will come out and say like, oh, no. But um, I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm in the acrobatic hall of fame. <laughs> so I feel wow. pretty cool. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So. Yeah, thanks. Explain yeah, that so trip. I was competing that this weekend. Okay. Um, so did you, did you do mm-hmm. the daddy? This weekend? I, I did it, yes. Um, so it's a full double, full, full, which means three backflips. Um, okay. And then you twist once on the first flip, twice on the second flip, and once on the third. So one, two, one. I, and then how, you try how do you even do that? <laughs> like, I mean, I, I, because I've seen enough, I, I, I've seen you compete enough and all that, like, I, I understand, like, I can, I can see it in my head, the rotation and the flip, right? Um, mm-hmm. but I don't understand how you do that. If I'm being, if I'm being completely honest, like it just, I, I can't wrap my brain around that. Yeah. I, I would like, I kind of equated to like doing math. So it's like you start with, you know, addition, subtraction, and then you get to like division and multiplication. And then all of a sudden you're doing calculus while mountain biking down a cliff edge with your eyes closed. <laughs> so it's like, you know, we start with one backflip and then once that's good enough, you add a twist or another twist and then you add a flip and then you just kind of like keep going through this degree of difficulty progression until you're doing, you know, four twists and three backflips. And, you know, the boys are doing even five twists. So yeah, it just, it's just, you know, this slow progression and yes, it's still scary for me. <laughs> I, I, that was my next question, actually. Um, I just yeah. wanted to talk about fear. I mean, because this is such a crazy, crazy sport. So, I mean, how, how, do you, how, do you, how do you wrap your head around it if there's still that level of, of fear? And, and it's interesting yeah, because... Yeah, a lot of people... Yeah, a lot of people think that we're, we have no fear, which, I mean, there might be I a few of that. us that are that crazy... Um, but more it's that like, we are really good at overcoming our fear and like have fear management, I would say. So, you know, there's been so many times where I'm scared and then I go and do a trick and I have a lot of success. I mean, there are some times where you just crash and that increases your fear, but I think that's one of the things that aerialists and any, um, extreme sport athletes, you know, live for that overcoming your fear. And that's, you know, it's kind of like a self accomplishment, you know, I'm, I'm just striving for that, um, you know, proving to myself that I can do more than I think I can. And the the fear is that you can't do it. Right. And then you overcome the fear and that's what feels so good. Mm -hmm. So the fear for me would be a little bit different (laughs) or a lot different. The fear for me would be getting hurt. (laughs) 
I, I would be scared of getting hurt. No, I'm definitely scared of getting hurt. But if you start thinking about that, you go down a rabbit hole you can't come back from. Yeah. So um, you kind of have to take that one out of your mind. And then, it, you know, I think when you're first doing a trick and like when you're in some really scary situations, like if there's like really insane weather, um, then, then those fears of getting injured come back into play. But when, when you're at such a high level of competition, you tend to just be like, the fear isn't necessarily getting hurt. It's not performing your best. That's what I, I get scared of. There's like two different types of fear. Yeah. The injury fear. And then the fear that like I put in all this hard work and dedication and I'm scared that I won't like, you know, deliver on, on this package of things that I like me and my team and my coaches yeah. and everyone around me have put together like that, that fear is that one's a, that's a heartbreaker. That's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I could see that. Um, so yeah. how did you get into a winter sport? Because I've heard that you don't like the cold. So how did, mm-hmm. How, how did that translate to you doing a sport that, uh, that, that it has to be cold for you to do it? Yeah. You know, I don't like the cold. And so as soon as I say that people are, think I'm even crazier than, than they thought I was before. Um, yeah. Being cold isn't fun. I like to do my sport when it's like as warm as it possibly can be without the snow melting. <laughs> um, yeah. but yeah, like I grew up uh, doing gymnastics and skiing. So I learned how to ski and I enrolled in my first gymnastics, gymnastics classes when I was three years old. My dad's a huge skier. Um, and he, uh, he actually bribed me in the cold with like candy. Cause like I'd be dad, dad, I'm so cold. I don't want to ski anymore. He's like, but I've got candy. And so, uh, <laughs> uh, that, you know, helped encourage me and like find a love for skiing. And so, yeah, I still don't like being cold, but I, I love my sport and that kind of over like takes over the, the fear and the cold. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not, a, I, I guess I could take or leave the cold. Um, I, I would actually rather mm-hmm. be a little bit colder than too hot because I feel like you can dress up for the cold. Sometimes it's a little hard to, mm-hmm. uh, to yeah, like sometimes super, super in negative hot. 40 degree weather, there's no amount of clothing yeah, that you yeah. can wear that'll make yeah. you warm. Plus it, when we're doing aerials, we're moving our arms all around. So you can't have too many layers on, or you like, can't do your sport. <laughs> yeah. So I, sometimes you, I just, you have to, you have to be cold. <laughs> so what's the coldest temperature you've ever competed in? I've competed in like negative 40 and I think, I think there's actually a rule in freestyle and competition that once it gets past negative 40, which is, I think negative 40 is like the both the same for negative yep, Fahrenheit and Celsius or somewhere in there. Um, if it goes colder than that, they're supposed to cancel the event, but it's like, I, I feel like when they, when the temperature starts to get that cold, they just like move the thermometer closer to a building just so that they can have the event. I swear. <laughs> um, but I, we've competed. Um, so this year in Yaroslav, Russia, um, it's North of Moscow. That's one of the coldest I've ever been uh, alongside South Korea Olympics, Pyeongchang Olympics in 2018. That wasn't temperature cold, but it was like humid and windy. And then that just yeah. oh, recipe for freezing. Yeah, yeah, and a recipe for disaster, I'm sure. Well, yeah, tell that to flips. my. I don't know if you could see my scar on my shoulder, but that's that's direct impact from the the wind in South Korea. Oh, oi, ow. Yeah. So, you've been to the Olympics three times, which is amazing. Um, congratulations on that. That's unbelievable. Yeah. Um, you know, just one of the, the, the many accolades that, that, that you're able to throw on your resume. But with the three Olympics, do you have a favorite Olympic memory? Um, I, I would probably say that my favorite Olympic memory is walking into opening ceremonies in Vancouver when I was 16. Because, you know, I mean, I have a ton of favorite Olympic memories. Like, I've been to gold medal hockey ma- matches. I've been to, like, so many cool events. I've, you know, been there with my family. Um, you know, I've seen seen teammates win, and that's really cool. Um, but that moment, 
it, it hits the most emotionally um, because I was, well, first of all, 16. So I actually didn't even like compute in my brain that I'd made the Olympics until I walked yeah. into opening ceremonies. Like they, my uh, coach told me I made the games. Um, actually, I was playing knockout with my friends and it like it didn't compute so much that I went and played knockout went, uh, you know, back to my room, shower, got ready for dinner, went to dinner. And my coaches were like, well, how did your parents take it that you qualified for the Olympics? And I was like, I didn't tell them. Like, I didn't call them. I think I like, my brain was just like, it's not real. Yeah. And, and until I walked in, in Vancouver to opening ceremonies, it wasn't real. And then I was like, I like got hit with this emotion and like saw all the teams walking in together. And I was like, wow, I, I, I really did it. I'm here. Um, and and so that one that one hits me the hardest in the yeah. all of the memories of the Olympics. That's that's so cool. Yeah, I don't know what it would be like. I mean, it it, it it's got to be unbelievable competing at that level and just know that. I mean, you you're literally one of the best athletes in the world in your sport. That's crazy to think about. Yeah, I still don't believe it. But now that I should now, I mean, I've got, I've got the accolades to say it, but it's still yeah. like, I think as an athlete, one of the reasons why you, you get so good is that like, you never, it's never good enough. I'm never good yeah. enough. I always want more and you're always hungry and craving for more. And so that's one of the things that, you know, first of all, keeps you humble. Uh, and then that pushes you to keep, you know, keep pursuing what you're doing and loving it and working hard towards it. Um, but yeah, the, the energy in the opening ceremonies and just in the Olympic village and everything is like palpable. You can feel like how much passion and hard work, blood, sweat, and tears, you know, what everyone yep. says, you can feel it, feel it in the yeah. air. Yeah. So we're, we're coming up to an Olympic cycle. We've got, mm -hmm. uh, what is it? Four. Four and a half months, something like that, left until oh, you're giving uh, me anxiety just saying that. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's going through your mind now besides anxiety? Uh, so, so we train into the pool in the summertime, and so we have one month left of that, and so this is our like yeah. big training um, before the winter season starts, and so my whole focus is uh, into this next month before the water ramps close here in Utah. Um, but yeah, it's just like. You know, every day I wake up and I'm like, well, what do I need to do today for the Olympics in four months? Like, is there anything I'm not doing today that I should be doing? Um, and, and sometimes that's a really hard question to answer because, you know, is it going and working out more? Or sometimes it's like doing nothing is part of yeah. getting ready for the Olympics, like recovering, resting and making sure that, you know, your, your mind is fresh when it needs to be. And so every day it's like making different choices. Like 24 seven, I am working for the Olympics. <laughs> yeah. So that, that brings me to another point that I love asking athletes because I think people who are not competing at that level just assume that, look, you, you, you were, you were born with these, these amazing abilities to, to flip and, and to, to conquer fear and all that stuff. But was there ever a time that you felt like quitting? Yeah, there's definitely been a, a, a couple of times that I felt like quitting, um, you know, through injuries, um, yeah. definitely felt like quitting, um, events where, I mean, we're judge sports is sometimes like, Sometimes the judges give you a gift and sometimes they don't give you a gift. And, you know, those times can be very frustrating. Um, t times where I win training and I lose the event, those ones are really frustrating. Like I like trained, like I, I killed it out there. And then, yeah. and then comp comes and you don't perform what you need to perform. And th those times get really frustrating. Um, and they've definitely made me consider quitting. But then I think like, these are the reasons why I do this sport. Like, and there are people that overcome these things all the time. And that's what makes them good. Um, when I tore my first ACL, um, my first thought is I hate the sport. <laughs> uh, my second thought was Hannah Carney won the Olympics the year after she tore her ACL. I'm like if she can do it, I can do it. 
I don't know why I thought I was going to like going to be able to do what Hannah Cardi did. She's an incredible athlete, but I was like inspired by the people that I'm trained and compete with. And so yeah. when when you see other people overcome those things and more, <laughs> um, I've seen people overcome way more than a torn ACL. Um, it, it makes you step back and say, okay, I can do this too, or you know, like I I can definitely um, you know put in the the effort that it requires to you know overcome this and it'll make me a stronger athlete and person afterwards. Um, I definitely think that you, you pull inspiration from a lot of different places. Um, if, if you only have one thing that's pushing you to do something, I I just feel like I, it would, I would be an unstable athlete. Um, so, you know, having people around you that inspire you, having different reasons for doing a sport, um, can definitely help when, when you feel like quitting, um, whether it's yeah, an injury, a bad crash, um, fear, um, a bad competition, um, an annoying teammate, anything. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so for me, yeah, it's like being inspired by athletes before me that have you know gone through similar injuries or situations, um, people that have overcome way more adversity than I have. Um, you know, using them as as motivation sometimes really helps when, when you're down. Um, but at the end of the day, I have fun, um, yeah. when I do my sport and, and sometimes I, I have to like tell my brain, okay, remember these times where you've had a lot of fun. And then once I do that, I get excited about the sport again. And you know, you don't, you don't feel like quitting. Usually those quitting moments in your brain aren't long lived. Yeah. Um, so, so that's, that's nice. And I, that's probably a testament just to like, yeah, again, how much I, I love my sport and how, how excited I am to, you know, keep pushing myself to be my best. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so we went on the uh, internet and, and told people to ask some questions and, 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 and we got a couple good ones. One of them from a mutual friend, USANA athlete. Alex Kopach. Uh-huh. And uh, his question is, uh, this is what he says. Hey, Ashley, would someone say my size have their knees explode if they tried one of your jumps? His size, but his quads, man, he is so strong. So he, I don't think he would explode or anything, but I, I'd watch. I'd definitely watch him <laughs> do it. We, we can make this happen for him. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it's like a body weight ratio, so like weight to strength. Yeah. And so if you're going to be heavier, you could be heavier. You just need to be that much stronger. Um, I, I think someone's calculated out how much stronger you need to be, but it's like for one pound that you weigh, it's like three pounds of strength ratio you need. So yeah. like if I can back squat, you know, two times my body weight, you know, I got to at least keep that up or even exceed it if I'm going to get heavier. Yeah. 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 I, I would pay to see someone like Copatch go. We, we need, we need to get him up to park city yep. and just get him on a water ramp. I'd love to see him on the water ramp. Then, then he can't, you know, he can't, his knees won't explode, but that yeah, would definitely be the water ramps are, are safe. I actually took my dad out. He a huge, huge skier. And he always, you know, does backflips off diving boards and stuff, but I taught him a backflip. 60, I think he's like 61 or 62. And I taught him his first backflip on skis, you know, a couple weeks ago. So, I mean, yeah. it's definitely possible. I, I remember watching those stories on your, on mm -hmm. your Instagram that, uh, I got to get up there and try it. Uh, you know, I'll watch. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's you would need to help to me. <laughs> I'll, I'll help um, you too. I, you know, the, the thing that's interesting, and I've brought this up a handful of times on, on these athlete interviews, but when you have somebody that's so good at their sport, they make it look easy and they make it look like someone like me. I mean, I know better, right? But let's just say an average person can look at it and be like, ah, I could do that. I could do that. So I've yeah. always thought it'd be a really cool TV series to actually watch people who think, oh yeah, I, I could totally do that. Jump into that sport and really see how it would be. Because I, I'm telling you, like even, even uh, ski jumping, right? Mm -hmm. They, they make that's that the point. They're supposed yeah. to make it look yeah. like they're just effortless. Yeah. But, 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 and, and I, 
what you say is true, but it also warps the perspective of, yeah, definitely. of humans to where, or normal people where they're just like, oh yeah. But like the ski jumping, I've, I've looked at that and thought, I mean, you know, they're not that high off the ground. Right. <laughs> and, and, and for sure, for, I'm not saying I don't think it would be scary. Because, Have you been to the top uh, of the ski jumps? So that's, that's where I was going with this. My, yeah, my, my point scary. is you look at it from the bottom and you're like, oh yeah, you know, I mean, they're just, they're, they're floating. Right. And then mm-hmm. you go up to the top and the first time I saw somebody fly off that and, and, and see from the perspective, looking yeah. down the hill, I, mm-hmm. I mean, my and they're going really fast off. too. Yeah. I've stood at the, like the takeoff point and yep. oh my, yep. I was like, oh my gosh, you're going so fast when they, when yeah. they go off. So yeah, I mean, I, I've, I've, uh, what's the, there's like a tweet that I always see every Olympics or like a meme or something. That's like, I like, please put an average human off the street and like do a, an Olympic sport just so that like we have a, a reference. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, cause I feel like even like with like swimming, I just like wish like a, like I would go swim in the pool cause yeah. like, I'm not a good, that good of a swimmer. And just to see how much like how fast they go by me. Yeah. I just would be nice perspective. <laughs> oh, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Because you know, that's, that's like it in every sport, even mm-hmm. the water ramps, right? Mm-hmm. Looking at the, well, and I've been on snow and I've seen you go off a triple on the snow and just looking at those ramps and then how steep it is, the landing. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I, I wouldn't even want to go off of one of those jumps not even doing a flip or anything and uh yeah and, and you guys are you guys are flipping spinning twirling dipping i mean <laughs> you guys, you're doing it you're doing it all um and it uh yeah it's 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 crazy it's crazy yeah so. but I, you know that tv show is a good idea but i think the even better one i think i've told you this before is you get like 10 olympic athletes from different sports yeah. and they try each other's sports because yeah. then it's not even an average person it's like a person that's really good at like their thing and then to have them go and like, I'm sure like, we're all so competitive. We would be trying like 150% at yeah. like a different sport. Like I want to see Alex like try figure skating. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that would be amazing. That would be amazing. But just as much as I want to see that, I love to see you pushing a bobsled and, and, <laughs> and, and ripping down one of those, rip, oh, ripping yeah, down that tunnel, right? Like. That'd be that ripping down that track. That'd be I crazy. probably like wouldn't even make it like the bobs that would go down, but I didn't make it in. That's what probably would happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, so we did a, we did a shoot with Copatch uh, a couple years back and we were doing it in the summer. So they just had, mm-hmm. they had a bobsled that had um, wheels on wheels. it. Right. Yeah. And, and, and it made it feel I mean, they, you know, the driver could practice and you kind of got the sense of it, but we also found out that they kind of have shock absorbers on it because it's yeah, meant it's for way slower too, I think. Yeah, yeah. And it's meant for people to, to kind of experience it, but not at the level of an, uh, of an Olympian because, you know, they, they add some comfort into it where it's yeah. just, you know, metal, metal, uh, skids on, a on, on ice and you get, yeah. you get flying but my point with that story was the film crew i let them go down to experience it when they they like couldn't lift their head up afterwards oh when they got back up they were just like wow whole new respect whole new respect and it and it just it goes back to if you have normal people maybe they're even (laughs) athletic right even athletic people trying stuff it's ah man i mean it's 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 a lot like they said it was unnerving how how fast they were going and you know how rough it was. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I know uh, better than to go up and do yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> I know better. I'll well, be sore but, for a week. But you might have to if we end up getting a handful of athletes together. Well, then I'll do everybody... it because I want to win. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but I have a, a, a couple more questions. I, yeah, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about missing the 2012 and 13 season because you mm-hmm. end up having back-to-back ACL tears. And yeah, um, yeah. How, how, was, 
how was that getting getting over that? And we also I, I want to talk a little bit about critics, including the critic that you know yourself as as, as maybe your biggest critic because I know that played a part when you were going through this the the, the two back to back injuries. Yeah, so I. Um, so I tore my first ACL. I had just started doing triples on snow, um, which was awesome. Um, I was having a lot of success with it. And um, I did something really stupid. I, I got sick, and I had a small competition to do. And I told my coach I was fine, but I was like, I had the flu or something. I was like puking before my, my training event, but I was like, oh, I'm just doing doubles today. Like, I can do this. And I shouldn't have done it because I crashed before the jump, which is like, you're supposed to crash after the jump or not yeah. crash at all. But I crashed before the jump, tore my ACL. Um, I didn't know immediately, but like other people knew immediately. They're like, yeah, that, that was a knee. And um, yeah. yeah, my first thought was, I, I hate, I hate this. I was, this was dumb. Like 17 year old Ashley, what are you doing? Like you're, you should have known better, <laughs> but you know, 17 year olds don't know that much. Um, but, uh, and, and I was really upset. Like I was really mad at myself for making a bad decision for thinking that I was tough enough to compete when I was sick. Um, and then, and then it, I flipped it. You know, I told you earlier, like I watched Hannah Carney, um, yeah. not terror ACL and then go and win the Olympics. So I kind of like, tried to swallow as much frustration I had and just swallowed it and put the, the inspiring part of other athletes having great success afterwards. And I went through my rehab process and my knee came out, like my leg was stronger after, um, than it had been before. Like it was like stronger than my other leg. <laughs> um, so yeah. I put so much work into it. Um, and I had an awesome summer. I went back and started doing triples again, faster than they thought I could. And everything was going really well. And I actually, competed in the same exact event the next year, same time. Like, I think it was like a day or two different just because of the calendar. Yeah. Yep, yep. And I tore my other one. I tore my other ACL. And so then I wasn't, I wasn't mad at myself. Like I was kind of, I was like mad at the world, like yep. the complex universe. I was like, they, like the universe, I'm mad at the universe <laughs> because I was strong enough. I didn't make any bad decisions. Like, I, I was competing well. I was healthy. And so I didn't really have anything to attribute my the ACL tear to. So I just had to be mad at the world and at large. <laughs> um, and, and that was really frustrating because I had, you know, there was nothing that I could really pinpoint as like something you did wrong. And like that makes overcoming something, I think, a little bit more challenging. Yeah. Um, I actually went to some, the same doctor did both my ACLs, Dr. Cooley. He's awesome. And he was like, you know, I could have probably told you you were into the other one, like anatomically. And I was like, dude, why don't you just send two at the same time? <laughs> um, but then, you know, I like, as I calmed down, I realized like my other leg is stronger than it was before. So I guess I gotta, I gotta do this one even better. Um, you know, I just went through ACL rehab. I like would come in and I would tell my PTs, I was like, oh yeah, so we're doing this, this, and this today. And they'd be like, yeah. <laughs> so I, you know, I, I had it down to a science. Yeah. And, um, so I was able to take, take that and be like, okay, well now I'm like bionic. I have like these superior ACLs now. And I, I, you know, I went through and, um, I actually almost complete, I completed my undergrad degree at the time. So that was a, that was a good wow. thing to, you know, change my focus. Um, which is good for a skier. You know, a lot of us don't, don't compete college, so that's good. Um, but uh, then I went and, and, you know, I definitely had a bunch of nerves coming out of those two ACL tears because of the whole universe is out to get me thing. Um, I, you know, I did everything right. You know, I did all my rehab right. And so I, I was like, well, if I don't do it right and something else happens again, like, that's not good. <laughs> like, I got to be done. Like, I'm, I'm not cut out for this. Um, and so that was really hard to change my perspective. Like as much as when you think about injuries, when you're jumping, the fear, sometimes it's too much to overcome. You, you can get, go into that like rabbit hole, a death spiral of, of scariness. And so, um, you have to like, keep falling back, keep saying the same things in your head. Hannah Carney did this. I did this before. My legs are stronger. Um, you know, I've done everything right. And you have to like keep reiterating that to yourself to really get over it. And then, um, the other fear was that I hadn't competed in two years. 
except for those comps where I tore my ACL yeah. at. And so um, one of my other fears was I won't be good anymore. Like, even though I, I had been jumping really well all summer, I hadn't competed. So I was like, will I be yeah. competitive? And um, so that was a big fear of mine too. And I actually got second place in my first World Cup back in China. Wow. And so That's that incredible. was – yeah, I, like I shouldn't, I didn't expect that, but I was like, oh yeah, okay, like I'm back, <laughs> I'm really back. Um, funny, I'd actually torn my elbow ligament in this competition in China, so like that was a big problem too. I was like, oh, I tore a different ligament, it's my ACL of my elbow. Oh. <laughs> I was like, what's wrong with me? I was like, I, I was like, oh my gosh, I've done like almost a full square on my body of ACLs. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, the Chinese hospital story that was that was oh man, I went with. Yeah, that's a whole, that's a hour long <laughs> conversation in itself. But um, yeah, I, I overcame that. And, you know, part of me was like, I have, I'm in China, I'm at this World Cup, I've put everything out there, I've done everything I possibly can. I'm just gonna try my hardest. And we'll go from there. And yeah, I got second place and that qualified me for my second Olympic Games. That wow. one event. Wow. So Crazy yeah, I mean, story. Self-doubt, for sure. There's a lot of it, but um, you have to just keep fighting the self-doubt with other things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right. Two more questions. All right. Um, another one somebody wrote in, how do, you, um, how do you utilize the trampoline to help you train? So what's nice about the trampoline is you don't have to hike up a bunch of stairs to the top <laughs> to go again. So, you know, you can just get a lot more repetitions in um, on the trampoline than you can um, doing aerials just because of the the volume of training that aerials allows you to do. Like I, I do like eight to ten jumps in a session. It takes yeah. an hour and a half. Whereas if you're on the trampoline, you could do a couple hundred jumps. So just it's just the – the quantity that you can do on the trampoline is really nice. It's indoors, so there's less elements um, to to deal with, less X factors. Um, but now that I've gotten older, a lot of the tra- I've definitely tapered down on the trampoline. When I was younger, I trampolined like twice a day, and now I yeah I don't I don't trampoline quite as much. But it definitely just it gives you air awareness, um, helps you work on your twist timing, um, keeps you fast, um, and yeah, just the amount of qu- qual- quantity that you can get on the trampoline is just a lot higher than, than when you got skis on your feet. Yeah. Well, I've been on that one, uh, on that trampoline mm-hmm. that, that, that you train on and, mm-hmm. uh, and Alex Ferreira, he's another mm-hmm. one that, that hits the trampoline a ton and watching mm-hmm. you guys on that thing again, you guys make it look super easy. The first time I jumped on it, it like it took me to a whole different level. Right. I was just like, yeah. like, I was rolling the windows up, as they say, just kind of like, Ugh. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. not the backyard trampoline setup. No. It's, it's intense. It's a real... Not even close. Like, I've had so many times where, um, like, I've been filming something, and, like, the guy on the film crew is like, can I try the trampoline? And as I'm screaming no, the guy jumps on the trampoline, and not, he, like, I had a guy knock himself out in one jump. Yeah. I was, yeah. I was like, in the middle of telling this guy it's not a toy. <laughs> Yeah, and like he kneed himself in the chin and was like starfish oh, down on the trampoline, and gosh. I was just like, I was like, did he sign a waiver? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah, then so your second thought was, are... I hope he's okay. <laughs> I, well, I was like, I, I was like telling him no, like yeah. as he was doing it, and uh, it was just too late. So now, before the day even starts, I'm like, hey, you you, you can't do this, <laughs> so yeah. don't even ask. <laughs> Well, um, it, 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 it's, it's a lot more bouncy. Like, mm-hmm. I, I mean, you I, can go like 20, 30 feet in the air off these things. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, I, it's no joke. Yeah. I wasn't even going nearly as high as, as like you or, or Ferreira. And mm-hmm. I mean, it, it, it made me a little nervous when yeah. I got, when I got that high, I was just like, holy cow. And you just, yeah, I wouldn't even, yeah. if I'm being honest, like, I wouldn't you, even try a flip on that thing because I feel jump, like I would. If you did like a, you know, like if you just did a standing jump, like a squat yeah. jump, if you did that on the trampoline, you, you go, you go like four or five times higher than you do on the ground. And so I think people yeah. just like, aren't prepared for that. I mean, trampolines are extremely fun. Like I love jumping on trampoline, but, um, yeah. yeah, like if you don't practice, like you get in 
to a force level that you're not ready for. And you have, you like can't even compute the, like, if you jump this much up, you're going to, you're going to push this much down with gravity. So yeah. it's like, yeah, definitely something that people aren't, aren't prepared for, but they're really fun. Yeah. <laughs> Super fun. Yeah. All right. Um, I lied. I have two more questions. <laughs> All right. One, um, the last one is, is, is a question I like to wrap on. Um, mm -hmm. so I'll get to that one next, but why you sauna? Why, why, why did you decide to, uh, to partner with, with USANA? Cause I know so a I, lot of athletes yeah. get worried about supplements. Yeah. So a couple of reasons. One is that we get drug tested. And so I want to make sure I can trust the things that are going into my body so that I don't have any nervousness when I go and have to get drug tested because I want to know that I'm competing clean, um, which is a huge, a huge part of our sport. Two is that I am, I'm fighting for decimal percentage points over people. Like the difference between the top athletes in my sport, like, yeah, there are some like big discrepancies, but like when you're, when you're fighting for a gold medal, you're talking like this much difference. And so where are you finding those things? And, and like for me, it's, my nutrition and what what's in my body every day like everything counts every single thing like the amount of sleep i got last night counts the amount of water i drink like the minerals in my body like everything counts yeah. and so when you're fighting for those little percentage points like i i want i need to make sure that like i'm doing everything possible and that's that's a huge element to it is making sure that i'm getting what i need um in my nutrition and my supplements that um, I can perform at those top, top levels. And three, USANA is just awesome. I love all the people. And so that goes back to like inspiring people. Like when you surround yourself with people that believe in themselves, believe in you, like pushing themselves harder, have good attitudes, they're fun to be around. Like that is huge. Like if you surround yourself with people that like don't like what they're doing, like it's not fun, then you don't want to do it. Like, so so being a part of a team and a culture that is so amped and excited about what they do and what you do, um, you know, I have a huge team behind me that's like twice as big because uh, I'm with USANA. So that's awesome. That's amazing. I appreciate you saying that. That's awesome. Yeah, like we you. Love you you're one of, of yeah, you. I'm, I'm giving you a direct Thank compliment you. in that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, Ashley. I appreciate that. Um, this will definitely make the cut. Uh, <laughs> It's uh, the only right. thing that came in the interviews is like, this is <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, okay. I appreciate that, by the way. And, and, yeah. and I love working with you as, as, as well. And that's, that's what I tell people that's so awesome about my job mm -hmm. is what you just said. Surrounding your people, surrounding yourself with the right people makes all the difference and, you know, can, can really make or break you as a person, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. and, and I tell people, my job is hanging out with incredible athletes who are some of the best humans in the world. So, uh, you know, I, I'm just as lucky because I get that influence from you guys as well. And it's, uh, it's definitely made me a better person. So thank you. Yeah, yeah of course. All right, last question. Okay. Um, and, and, and again, this is something that I like to, to ask every athlete. Um, what is one thing that you do every day that, uh, that you think could help somebody else? Now that could be anywhere from, you know, you meditate every morning or a s certain routine, like drinking water, whatever, whatever it is. Is there one thing that you do every day that helps you that would be easy for somebody watching to implement in their life? That's a tough one because I do a lot of things. <laughs> like everything I do, like definitely um, impacts my training and just like how good I feel. Um, I think what I I try not to like pick the same thing every day. Like pick one thing that's healthy. Like yeah. I'm not perfect. As much as I'd love to be perfect, I'm tr striving for it, but I'm like not perfect. So like 
you know, there's some days where like, I'm like, oh, I just really need to drink more water. And like, that's a big win when I drink water, but like, there are going to be days where I don't do that perfectly. And so I guess accepting that like, you don't have to be perfect, but you just have to do something. Um, yeah. I think for me is like, it's like a self love thing. Like, don't get really mad when you don't do everything exactly right. Just like keep, keep going and keep doing, you know, more every day that you can, you know, attribute to a healthy lifestyle, I guess. But yeah, not getting upset about yourself when like, like people try and do these like 30 day, I'm like super strict and I've done those, but like sometimes I get so upset with myself if I'm not perfect and I'm done do exactly what I said. And so, you know, giving myself a little bit of leniency in some of those things, um, when I'm trying to be healthier, um, I think, I think is good for your psyche. <laughs> is that an answer? I don't even, that's like a yes, long no, no. Like response. <laughs> no, no, that's perfect. That's perfect. Yeah. So how I interpret what mm -hmm. you said is, is just picking something, one thing every day that mm -hmm. whether, whether like you said, drinking water or whatever, um, doing that as so you like to adjust to what you think is important that day right yeah. so maybe you didn't do it like as good the day at a before. time though for sure like i'm like oh this week i really need to focus on hydration and like kind of make it more of a habit and do better because yeah. then it kind of like if you focus on it for a little bit it usually like like then the next week i like not it's not like a mandatory thing i'm hydrating it just kind of happens because you just like kind of get better at like being aware that that's like a, an important thing yeah. or like if i like in the beginning i'm like okay i need to stretch like 20 minutes today every day for a week and then after that i kind of get into a routine because it feels good like yeah. to, to do each little thing and so then just starting those things and you know being lenient with yourself and and stuff just puts you into a better overall lifestyle that doesn't have yeah. to be perfect. It just has to be, you know, keep getting a little bit better, keep feeling good yeah. and doing the right things. Okay. So just improving, even if it's just a, a tiny bit. percentage every day, just improving yeah. on your overall well being. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Ashley, yeah, you're amazing. I appreciate our friendship. I appreciate you taking the time out today. I know you're super, yeah, super cool. busy. You got a lot going on. So thank you for taking the time. And as always, love chatting with you. Yeah, thanks, Jason.